Have you ever thought of a liveaboard life in France as a foreigner? I had not, but I'd now been in France for a while and I already started to finish up some of my projects while also trying to enjoy life here and make myself a bit at home. Today I am going to take you to a ordinary liveaboard day. Many people think that I am sailing all the time, which I am obviously not because I also have to make some money. And um, yeah, also some people think that I live on or that you can live on YouTube, but that's that's not really true. In the best, very best case, YouTube and my very much appreciated patrons give me the opportunity to sometimes upgrade some of my equipment and pay for the editing software and stuff like that, which is super, super helpful to keep producing the videos, but um, it doesn't pay for cost of life, you know, so. I am working and now I've been in Le Havre for a little while and I found a very nice co-working place here so I'm gonna take you there but uh, first some uh, breakfast in my world there is no morning without uh, coffee so that's first and I'm so so happy about my induction that I got as a compliment to the propane makes life a little bit easier. One thing about being a liveaboard is that sometimes you start off, quite often actually, you start off projects that you don't have time or all the items to finish and that's quite much the reality of today. So I got two or three ongoing projects that I've half finished which um, makes the boat totally like a mess and um, I hope I get one of the things that I need today it's supposed to arrive from Italy today um, it's a stainless part and uh, the stainless stuff is very expensive at the moment and it's also very um, very hard to get this long delivery times so I've been waiting for one and a half week now but um, I think it's gonna come so um, when you have a little bit of look around, uh, yeah, I'm not really proud of this. At the moment, I share the sofa with a spinnaker, with some uh, vacuum sealed winter clothes and cushions and a little bit of more stuff. But um, yeah, that's the way it is. I only going to work half a day today, so I'm going to have some time to go and check up some things. Um, for one thing, I didn't get enough contact lenses from Sweden with me and now I think four of them has broken so I'm completely out of them and I already tried to go to two places to see if I could find uh, replacements but uh, they didn't have that particular kind so I'm gonna go and see if I could fix that today and all those sort of small things, they are a little bit more difficult when you are in a new country, when you don't speak the language, you don't really know where to go to find things. So it takes more time to live in a new place. You also don't have that much uh, distractions, so you have that little extra time, which I think is very nice. Well, being out of lenses means uh, today it's uh, glasses day. My colleagues at the office, they are kind of good at suggesting different kinds of, uh, you know, activities to, to join and to tell what's going on in the town. So I found out uh, a couple of weeks ago that this uh, salsa dances, it has a really, really nice concept. You go to this uh, super nice place and you pay 8 euro and you get a dance class and you get a beer at the bar and then it's social dancing all night and it goes on like, I think at least three days a week. So you can pick like the, the dance style you like. But uh, today um, they have suggested pole dancing and I'm a little excited and I'm a little scared. <laughs> so uh, I will see how that's gonna go. Um, I think it's at seven at night. So, um, and I think uh, at least uh, a bunch of the girls from the office is going so um, I think it's gonna be a fun time and um, I hope it's not gonna be too difficult 
One of my projects is to um, install the new battery monitor that I uh, got last week. But it also means there is no staircase here at the moment, so it has to be a little bit of a climb to get out. Bags and uh, yeah. not very far to walk, it's about uh, 15 minutes. I did have a bike, but um, it got stolen my second night here. So I'm a little bit pissed by it because it's a gated community. So nobody that doesn't belong here don't have access. So I don't want to blame any of my neighbors, of course, but uh, it's a little bit strange that the bike that it's locked and inside the locked gate gets stolen that quickly. And it's just not any bike, you know, because it's a foldable bike that I could actually keep on the boat. So, well, that's life. So now I have to walk. And uh, on the way out, here you can see, is where everybody store their bikes and where you find showers and toilets and then you pass through the gate. You obviously don't have to join me for a 15 minute walk but there are some nice parts of the town that uh, I pass on the way so I'm going to show you a little. To begin with, I live next to the event place Magic Mirrors. Quite often they play some nice music when I get back from work and uh, um, I really enjoy it. I reach all the way to the conference. It's of course not equally nice once um, they have the <laughs> nightclubs that ends like 3 or 4 in the morning. But I think that's only been twice the last month or so, so I can live with that. But otherwise they, they have a good taste in music. This is a very maritime town and as you can see it's waters uh, in many places in the in town and they also have sailing lessons today they are out with the with the optimists and something else actually one thing i learned quite recently is you see the sails of the optimists with the the flags that is actually a part of an art installation in in town and they have quite a lot of art installations and they are also all temporary so they don't want the, all the people living here to get like too used to it so they don't see it anymore so it's up for i think it's sort of like a some things for a couple of years and something is like for the summer and then it's uh, taken away and they make something new so i think it's a very nice thought but uh, yeah, as the sales of the optimists, I hope they keep them because if they get good sales, it's wasted to, to not use them anymore. This is actually a very interesting town, although it's not on many people's radars for a visit. It's not a typical French town and I think that's why some people say you either hate it or love it. I don't think that's, that's really true because um, there's always a middle, but... Oh, it turned red, unfortunately. Well, anyway. Um, it's, it's definitely a lot of things to see in this town and it's also it's very spread out so it takes the time to get to know it. I think that's why some people don't like it or love it immediately. I'm gonna walk alongside instead. It takes too long to wait for all the cars. So I think it's... Uh, waiting for a green light takes forever here. But, uh, no, there's no more cars. So let's cross. It's not very far to go now. So we're just gonna cross a parking lot and we're there. There is a few different co-working places here in Lao. I think I found three of them, but I like this one the best. And they also speak a bit English, which makes life easier for me. 
but I think all of the places are very very good places one of them were less friendly let's just put it that way and uh, a bit slower on giving a price well actually I still after I think one month has not gotten a price from them but I just uh, sort of gave up so well crossing uh, road talking to Cambrai is uh, probably not that appreciated here you could tell but uh, yeah, maybe it's not that that good now we're here That's it for today of working and let's see if I can find uh, new contacts. It uh, took me five stores and now I got one. Not the same uh, brand as I normally have but uh, um, an equal one. So my weekend is saved. As I said, being new someplace takes more time. I've run around almost the entire time to get it. I tried to get a few other errands done, but um, that was less successful. I uh, walked to, to the marine store. Uh, normally if things has arrived, they send a text and they hadn't done that, but I thought like maybe they're busy and it's the afternoon and it should arrive at the latest today. But it still hadn't arrived. So um, I guess the boat is gonna look a little bit like a mess a little while more, but I'm on my way back and I'm going to clean up a little bit. <laughs> it uh, turns out that I am um, kind of famous here apparently. <laughs> at, the, at the office there was uh, a woman that I haven't met before so I was introduced to her and uh, she was like Oh, you are this Swedish girl that lives on a boat. Like everybody's talking about you all over town. And I was like, oh, I don't know if that's good or bad. But anyway, now I um, I discovered that I am out of water. So um, I need to fill up uh, the water. <laughs> Then we were up for the pole dancing and the pizza night. That was a nice pizza evening. I got a good uh, doggy bag. I don't know how I'm gonna fit this into a boat fridge, but uh, it was really delicious. So good lunch tomorrow. Uh, you didn't get any film clips from the pool then saying sorry about that but uh, it was a lot of mirrors inside and it felt like a little bit rude to the other girls exposing them but it was it was super fun actually but now it's getting late and it's time to go to bed and I hope you appreciated this episode even though it was very different from the normal sailing episodes but this is a little bit like life live aboard here in France is like I want to deeply thank my Patreons for supporting the making of these episodes and if you want to contribute you can also become a Patreon or buy me a coffee at the links below. If you haven't already, subscribe so you don't miss out. And if you appreciated this episode, please give it a big thumbs up.